Welcome to the Success in Medicine podcast. I'm Dr. Rajani Kata, and I'm here with my partner, Dr. Samir Desai, for part two on how to succeed in the anesthesiology rotation. So, Samir, the first question I wanted to ask you um, regarded uh, procedures. So for medical students who are rotating on anesthesiology, how would you suggest that they prepare for procedures? Well, what I would suggest is that they develop the proper mindset. And the proper mindset is that there are going to be many opportunities to perform procedures. And uh, I think you want to embrace this chance to do those procedures and prepare for them. So the classical teaching as far as doing procedures is see one, do one, and teach one. I think there's a lot that needs to be done before you see one. And what I would suggest is um, that you think about the things that you need to do before that. And how would you recommend that students go about doing that? What I would suggest is that students become familiar with the procedures that they're likely to be involved in. And once you're familiar with those procedures, then you want to prepare to learn about those procedures. And so that uh, involves, you know, reviewing the, the indications for the procedure, the contraindications, the instruments and tools you will need to actually perform the procedure, reviewing the risks associated with the procedure, and the possible complications. And are there anything, any other steps that students can take to prepare? Absolutely. So in the past, what students would do is they would review uh, the way in which a procedure was performed. Perhaps they would take a look at a, a textbook uh, but now there are many other ways to prepare for procedures. So you can look at videos, you can take part in simulation, and a lot of anesthesia de- anesthesiology departments have opportunities for students to participate in simulation. But what you want to do is you want to visualize the steps involved in that procedure. You should be able to think through in your mind the sequence of events that need to be done to perform that procedure. And in doing so, you're going to be take a very, very complex task and break it into a series of much more manageable steps. What's another tip that you would provide for students on their anesthesiology rotation? Another tip uh, I would offer is uh, it's very important to pay attention. There's a great blog uh, from Dr. Uh, Richard Novak. It's called the Anesthesia Consultant dot com uh, blog, and he writes in, about the personal qualities uh, for success as an anesthesiologist. And one of the qualities that he highlights is what he calls compulsive attention to detail. And that's something that you want to highlight during your entire rotation. And there are many different ways to uh, showcase your ability in this area. For example, the way in which you review the patient's medical history or medication history, uh, the lengths you go to to plan the anesthetic regimen, uh, the way in which you present information about the management of the patient's multiple medical conditions. Uh, all of those are opportunities to show that you have this very, very important trait, this attention to detail. And what Dr. Novak uh, calls it is basically most anesthesiologists have a touch of OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. What about during the case itself? Is there a way to highlight this skill, this quality during the case itself? Definitely. So there's a lot of attention placed on patients at the beginning of uh, anesthesia cases and of course at, at the end when, when everything is wrapping up. But uh, that period between the beginning and end is also very, very important. So let's say that you're with the anesthesiologist in the maintenance phase of the case, and uh, during this period, it's important that the patient uh, be monitored very, very carefully. And sometimes these cases run run very, very long. And as a medical student, uh, you can practice uh, being very, very vigilant and, and keeping an eye on vital signs, you know, knowing what the end tidal oxygen and carbon dioxide is, you know, taking a look at the fluids that are running and asking yourself, you know, is the bag running low? 
uh, you know, what's going on on the other side? You know, how are the surgeons uh, doing and, and what's happening from their perspective? And if you notice anything in particular, um, you can always bring that to the anesthesiologist's attention. And medical students have made that type of contribution before in anesthesiology, and uh, they're a vital part of the team. What about... Uh, what about some advice for students regarding interactions with patients? And um, sometimes that's uh, sometimes students don't recognize before their anesthesiology rotation how incredibly important that is for anesthesiologists. I was hoping you could comment on that area. So I'm glad you brought that up because anesthesiologists uh, oftentimes are meeting the patient for the first time just before surgery, and uh, if you uh, know people who've gone through surgery, um, you may realize that people have um, a lot of different emotions um, as the surgery draws ne draws near. And uh, many patients feel very, very vulnerable, and um, it's not unusual to encounter some intense emotions. And as medical students, sometimes you will see the patient before the attending anesthesiologist. And uh, there are a lot of concerns that uh, patients may potentially have. So just to give you an example of some of them, you know, they may ask students about you know, uh, the pain that they may experience, either, you know, during the surgery or after the surgery. They have, may have concerns about, you know, what if I don't wake up after surgery? And what about how I'll feel after the surgery? Will I have a lot of nausea? Will I be throwing up? Um, you know, some people really worry about uh, waking up during surgery. And, um, and then, of course, they have concerns about the competence and skill of the anesthesiologist. And knowing that patients are likely to have these kind of concerns, what can medical students do to help their patients? So these are uh, difficult issues for medical students. Uh, as a medical student, you don't have that much experience dealing with these types of problems. And so early on in the rotation, I would recommend that you talk to your resident or attending about these types of concerns, because these are the concerns that patients really have. These are the pressing issues on their mind, and it's very likely that you'll encounter one or more of these issues during your rotation. And so by talking about them uh, early in the rotation, you'll be better able to handle them. And what about during the rotation itself? Uh, in terms of your relationship with the resident or the attending, um, can you comment on that part of the rotation? So anesthesiology rotations vary considerably in how they're structured. Some are very highly structured, and so you will be assigned to a particular attending or resident or team, and you may be with that particular person or team for several days before you move on to another group. Not all rotations are structured that way. Some are much less formal, and students are given um, some objectives and a list of expectations and then sort of sent on their way to kind of uh, make things happen for themselves. And uh, when the rotation is less structured, that can present some challenges to students, especially students who seek to develop a relationship with an attending physician. And if you find yourself in this particular type of situation, do you have any advice for students who are on that kind of a rotation? So if you are on a less structured rotation and you really desire to develop a strong relationship with an attending physician, so perhaps you want to make a career out of anesthesiology, and if that's the case, you obviously need a strong letter of recommendation. And so with that being the case, you need to figure out a way to work closely with an anesthesiologist. And in those cases, a certain degree of assertiveness and self-motivation will be needed to initiate and build a strong relationship with an attending. One useful thing that served me well with, with other students is if you're a student, just reach out to your upperclassmen or to recent graduates at your school and find out which one of those attendings in the anesthesiology department is known to be a great teacher? Which one of those attendings is known to be a great mentor? And if you don't have access to students, you can also ask residents. And students and residents can both point you in the right direction. And once you figure out who that attending is, then you just have to determine how you can interact with that particular person and to work 
more closely with him or her. And so one thing you could do uh, is volunteer to take call with the attending. And that's a great way to work one-on-one with an attending. Okay. I think that's excellent advice, Samir, for the anesthesiology rotation. And I also think that advice is very applicable to a number of other rotations. I did want to tell our listeners that we are in the process of working on a series of episodes devoted to succeeding in different medical school rotations. So this wraps up our anesthesiology rotation, but we do have several others that are in the pipeline, and uh, this is certainly um, an area that we feel very passionate about, helping students do well in their rotations, because that really translates to doing well as a clinician. So thank you. 